And welcome to the Knitting Traditions Podcast, episode 23. My name is Inga, and this is my little corner where I talk about what I'm knitting on and what I have bought to knit with in this episode. And yes, if you're returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you're new, welcome. We hit 20,000 subscribers and I am so excited. I never imagined it going this well. I'm just little me sitting here talking about what I love, which is knitting. And today I'm coming to you from outside of my apartment. I just got home from work and I had some extra energy to record, but it was really dark inside. So I'm trying to record outside. I hope there isn't too much noise and that not too many cars will be driving by this morning. Um, yes, I am wearing uh, one of my summer knits. This is a petite knit pattern. It's called the Ankers Sommerbluse, which I think in English might be Ankers uh, summer top or summer shirt or something like that in English. Um, it's a top-down construction with uh, increases in this ribbed structure looking thing and I knit this in Sanneskarn Line, so it's a linen yarn and after washing it it feels kind of stiff and harsh but according to what some of you viewers told me if I just don't wash it <laughs> It will soften up so we will see how that goes um with wools you don't really need to wash them because they're self-cleansing cleansing but the plant fibers not so much so you know if it starts to smell or look really dirty i will have to wash it at some point uh i really like how this construction fits um i think the yoke is super nice I don't remember if I knit the arms as instructed in the pattern or if they're supposed to be shorter. I don't remember, but I like to have it mid upper arm kind of. Um, and I think that looks really nice. And I am wearing it outside a dress today because it's summer, even though it's like 15 degrees and rainy every day here. I think pairing dresses with knitwear is really cute. I haven't really done it before because I haven't had a lot of dresses and knitwear that kind of matched because most of my knitting is very rustic, warm, woolly wool. Uh, but I do have some summer tops and I especially think the, the lighter ones look really nice with dresses. Um, so I have a new finished object to show you, which really does look great with uh, dresses and skirts and um, pairing it with summer colors. So uh, I will show you that. Well, I can show you now, can't I? Um, let's see, I'll just have to move around everything that I have been knitting on. Yes. We'll start with the finished objects. Nice and neat. So this is my finished uh, ranunculus. I knit this in a cotton and silk blend. Some really old stash that I bought in Turkey. The yarn, I think it's called papyrus. I did bring, bring it to show. Uh, this is Fibra Natura. Uh, natural fine hand knitting yarns and the name of the yarn is papyrus so it has this twisted looking 
um, yarn. When you look at the ball, it almost looks like it's not that soft, but it really is super soft. Some of the softest plant fiber yarns I have ever encountered. It's 78% cotton and 22% silk. Um, and one ball of this 50 grams gives you 120 meters or 131 yards. And I believe it took me three and a half balls to make to make this ranunculus. I knit, put a little uh, tab in the back just to make it easier to see what's the back because it does have a little bit of um, extra rows in the back for shaping. I did do some alterations to this pattern. Um, it's I did I went down half a needle size. It's a paid for pattern, so I'm not gonna say too much, but I went down half a needle size, even though I got gauged with the recommended needle, just because I made this before in a in a um, mohair silk, and it is quite wide. That works really well with the mohair silk. But I wanted this to not be too wide and more just drapey without being too big. Uh, it still is oversized. Um, so I went down half a needle size. That gave me one extra stitch per 10 centimeters compared to the recommended gauge. And then um, after you do this lovely addicting yoke, which by the way is super fast, you're supposed to do some raglan increases. Um, after the yoke before you split and I'm just gonna say that I only did two raglan increases and then I saw that okay I think it's long enough now to go underneath the arm and I don't want to make it any bigger uh, so I divided for uh, the body and sleeves and then I saw that okay maybe the sleeves will be a little bit too tight with the amount of stitches that I had so I just made sure when I picked up, because I picked up stitches um, to knit the sleeves, which is different from in the pattern, I just did it how I usually do it. I just picked up some extra stitches um, in the join, because sometimes you get a little bit of holes there when you pick up stitches between the ones you had on the needle and the ones you pick up. So I picked up like two or three extra stitches on each side there, and uh, that made it the perfect size. And I've been wearing this a lot um, I didn't uh, wash this um, which I normally would to block it I just sprayed it with some water because of my experience with these plant fiber yarns that they get quite stiff and it is just so soft and lovely but at some point I will have to like really rinse it out but for now it is super nice uh, it looks really great on top of dresses even better than this one because this one is a bit more loosey and it has a super nice drape if you ask me. The only thing I find a bit annoying with uh, the plant fiber yarns like cottons and linen and silk is that when you weave in your ends they don't stay hidden and stay put uh, as well as with the the toothy woolen yarns so I'm always a bit worried that it's going to start showing the ends, um, which it already has a little bit underneath the arm here. So I'll have to tuck that back in. Um, yeah, if you uh, knit a lot with plant fibers and you have any tips, uh, let me know. Because uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one who experiences this. All right, so that's my summer version of the ranunculus, my second version, and I will most definitely be making more in the future, just like my friend over at Heather and Hops, a lovely podcast that you will love if you like my content, I think. So, second ranunculus and more to come, I am sure. I actually have three and a half balls left, so I could make a completely or just a, the same one again, uh, then I would have two, <laughs> or I could gift it. It was a super quick knit. I think it took me three days, where one of the days was a lot of knitting, and then two of the days were not that much knitting. So yeah, and it just feels so nice. 
So that was my finished object. I have some works in progress. So this is my Skuvmaka sweater by Fiber Tales. I showed you this on my last podcast, but I have gotten quite a bit further. I'm now working on my third ball of yarn because this medium size uses three balls of yarn. It's a top-down construction as well. And I'm now working on the body to get it to the right length um, and then do the rib. So it's getting there. Not that much left. I really enjoy the structured yoke. I think I tend to gravitate towards color work in the fall and winter, but in the spring and summer, there is something about a structured yoke which I just find really nice and interesting. And it still has a lot of stockinette, so I can just knit, knit, knit in the round. And the yarn that I'm using is the Merino Tweed by Pickles, which is a uneven spun yarn with lots of tweedy aspects to it and it's it's a really lovely fabric it's super light this whole sweater which is a medium size will weigh 300 grams that's three balls of of this 100 gram uh yarn and i really enjoy the color all of these beautiful color specks are super pretty and I have more in my stash because this was also some stash yarn um, that I bought one time when I was in Oslo, the, the capital of Norway, which is where the pickles store is. And yeah, I remember thinking that I thought the yarn was a bit expensive, but then again, if you only need three balls to make a sweater, it wasn't that expensive after all. And my hair is everywhere. So yes, that was one of my whips, which is almost done, but I'm kind of not wanting to knit on it because I've enjoyed it so much and I don't want it to end. So I might just have to make another one in the future. And I have more of this yarn um, in my stash that I have now at the cabin, which I talk about in the previous episode if you're interested. So. Maybe I will have to cast on something else, but I really like this pattern as well with the yarn. So <laughs> I also want to make another one of this in the future. We will see. So that is a whip that is almost finished. And then another whip that I also showed you last time is the Windgate shawl um, from the Lane uh, 52 Weeks of Shawls book. I haven't made a lot of progress since last time. I'm working my way up the shawl, but it's getting quite big. And this is a project that I kind of like to knit on in between other things now, because I've memorized the pattern. It's just something easy to bring, but it's also not completely mindless. So if I'm tired, it's not what I gravitate towards, but it's a nice in between. and. It's not, it's really not that much left. I'm sorry if you hear a lot of noise. Somebody decided to cut the grass. <laughs> if you've ever watched the grocery girls, that is a problem they also have when they knit outside and record. I understand their struggle now. So yes, and the yarn is the lovely yarn that I got from uh, the Unico yarns that's the the company that where she dies her indie died but unico knits is also a, an account of hers and she is also a lovely podcaster and she made this yarn for me it was a generous gift to try her yarn it's non-superwash um wool and silk mohair and she dyed this color thinking of me and it's called caramel and i think it's just stunning in the last episode it blew out quite a bit but i think this is quite true to color it's a lovely golden yarn and i have one ball left of each which i think i will have to start on this shawl but i think i will also have quite
quite a bit left for some future projects. And yes, she also donated some yarns for you guys, uh, which we will put into a prize later this summer. And I cast on two new things since last time. Let's see. So this is a color which is very unlike me, if I may say so myself. But I was just kind of feeling the summer vibes of colorful summer dresses and then having, you know, some basic knitwear on top of that. And I haven't gotten very far on this, but this is a design by Jessie Maid, uh, M-A-E-D, and this is the Summer Flutter Butt Top, or Flutter Butt Top, Summer Flutter Top. I'll, I'll write the name. Um, and I've started knitting the body, which is just stocking as super easy to just knit in the round and I think I picked the medium size for me and this is the stunning yarn and this is a yarn from Spain it's a linen silk yarn and I'll show you I'll show you the logo, the logo here. It's felizipunto.com. This is um, a hand dyer that I came across on Instagram when I was scrolling. And I saw her yarn and I thought it was just beautiful. I have never seen like a linen silk hand dyed yarn with such beautiful colors. It has a gorgeous shine. But it also has these lovely tiny specks everywhere. But it's not, it doesn't get like pooling or anything. It's just beautiful. So I couldn't resist. I had to buy some pure yarn. And I saw this color and I thought, that is so pretty. It's not something I usually go for. But it, I thought it just looked so pretty. So I decided to get it. And I'm really happy I did because I think it's even more pretty in uh, real life. So I got actually three colors um, from her store. So this I got two of and it's 400 meters. It's a fingering weight. And this is 75% Sida Morera, which is a silk and 25% linen. And the yarn is called Solaris. That's the base. And the color is purple. To me, this looks like a lavender, lavender color. And it is just stunning and shiny and beautiful. So I have two of this. I'm not sure. I think I think I will have to break into both of them for the top or maybe just one. We'll see. Uh, I think two because I, I intend to make it just a little bit longer than in the pattern. And maybe the ruffles a little bit longer as well. Uh, we shall see how I decide to go about. It's 400 meters per 100 grams. And it's hand dyed in Spain. Exclusive silk linen spun. It's just so pretty. And so that was kind of my exciting color, new to me. I also saw these. This green. And I am a sucker for, for the browns and greens and the rust. So I saw this and... I decided to get three because that could also give me a sweater. I'm not sure what I'll be making yet, but it was just so stunning I couldn't resist getting it. It really is just so pretty. So this is the same uh, Solaris uh, base and this color is called Green Patina. It's so pretty! I think it's really gorgeous. And um, I don't know if it's because I bought so many yarns or if she does it with every order, but she also included uh, one of her bags from her store. 
which says uh, Felizi e Punto on it. And I do love a good bag. And, you know, she had a rust-colored yarn, so I, <laughs> I could not resist getting two of this as well. I think it will make a lovely t-shirt um, if that's what I decide to go for. And I think that's probably what I'll make in the future. And this is called Arizona Senui, Semi, Arizona Semi, uh, Semi. Maybe you can uh, understand handwriting better than me, but it's Arizona Se something. <laughs> so yeah, oh, it's so pretty. Oh. Yeah. So loving how shiny and beautiful these yarns are um the orange doesn't have as much specks of color as the purple the purple has the most and the green patina also has a little bit all right so um i just have to sit here for a good 20 minutes drinking coffee because all my neighbors decided to mow the lawn so hopefully they are done. If not, I will sip some more coffee. So I have another cast on. I came home from um, the cabin and I had some parcels waiting for me. Uh, another part caster who just started out called Summer Knits, but it's spelled Summer Knits. I'll put it here. She used to make stitch markers, um, but she stopped and she had a lot in her stash and she really liked the idea of the stash along that we're hosting. So she sent me a parcel or she asked me if she could send me some of her stitch markers um, to put in as one of the prizes for the stash along. But not only did she send me stitch markers, uh, she also sent me a skein of yarn. This gorgeous color right here which um, if you know me uh, or if you just watch what colors I enjoy, this is very much a color that I enjoy. So this is um, a collabor collaboration yarn between uh, Matt, Matt, Matt Tosh and her local yarn store in Tulsa. So it's called Matt Tosh Loops and the color is Nothing Gold Can Stay. And it's a TML tweed base. And I agree, nothing gold can stay in the stash. So I cast on as soon as I got her parcel. And I have gotten this far on my cast on. And she also sent me some stitch markers she had made for me. So I chose a golden one to match the golden sock. And this is a pattern from the Lane 52 Weeks of Socks book. And the pattern is called Stone. And it's a pattern by Tatiana Kulikova. So there is the sock pattern. And it's a really interesting way of knitting. Um, it takes quite a long time though. <laughs> So this is going quite a bit slower um, than my usual vanilla sock would. But I think it looks really interesting and it's going to be a really nice and pretty indoor sock because this only has 2% nylon. Uh, the rest is wool, 90% uh, and then 8% viscose and 2% nylon. So I, I don't know if this will be um, as sturdy as the yarns that have 20-25% nylon but it's gonna be a super nice indoor sock and really pretty with this extra structure on it. So I knit a little bit on this every now and then um, but I need a bit more mindless knitting uh, at the time that I'm in now because I have a lot of work going on and it makes me quite tired so it's nice to have something to just completely relax with but also have a little bit of interest uh, every now and then 
So I think after I finish these socks, I'll still have some left that I might put into a one of my scrappy projects or if it's enough into a future shawl because I also have the 52 weeks of shawls book. So yeah. Thank you so much Summer for this yarn and that was everything that I've been knitting on. So now let's move into the acquisitions and I can show you what Summer sent for the podcast. Uh, so get yourself some nice beverage and um, if you don't enjoy acquisitions then I will see you next time. I am enjoying some almond. No, I'm not. I'm enjoying some oats, coffee, mix thing. Coffee with oat milk. They stopped selling it in the store now, so I bought every single piece they had left. Because I do enjoy this a lot, and it's like a guilty pleasure. I just add water, and then I have a tasty coffee. Alright, so... Let's get into some acquisitions. And of course, the acquisition from uh, Summer is in the bottom of the pile. So excuse a little bit of noise. All right. I'm sorry if there's a little bit of crinkles here. So she sent me this really nice card which I think she has made herself <laughs> and with like stickers and tape it's really nice and yeah so she talks about the the yarn that she sent me and the stitch markers so she sent me stitch markers um, for two of the stash along giveaway prizes one for uh, the one that will be at the end of summer and one for the fall so if you're new we are running a stash along uh, for all of this year so if you have something in your stash that you got before 2021 make something with it and you can um use the hashtag stash along on instagram or on uh ravelry we also have a group where you can post your finished objects and it doesn't have to be knitting it can be sewing or crochet or anything creative so i got these stitch markers which are little golden looks like roses and she has them on these um, loops that you can open up so it's a really nice way to carry your stitch markers and you can put it on your keychain if you want she no longer makes stitch markers so she doesn't have a store where you can buy them but she was just so generous to donate what she had to the podcast so that someone will get a lot of joy out of them and then these cute little sandals she has made stitch markers so these um, are very summery all right we'll try again if the neighbors will behave so she donated um, two kinds of stitch markers the uh, sandals and also some stitch markers she's made with beads so these are little flowers uh, more sandals and some lovely beads that look almost like freshwater beads. So what I think I will do is um, I'll add one of each to the summer uh, stash along giveaway later on the summer and one for the next one. So if you want to get your hands on some of these one of a kind stitch markers, then um, start making something. And she wrapped it up really nicely, so I will try and keep the wrapping for you guys for when the time comes. And yeah, she has two episodes out now on her podcast, so you should definitely go check that out. She also sent um, one of the rulers, um, we call them rulers? the measuring tapes um from her local yarn store so i will add that to one of the prices as well so that was really sweet of her and um 
I'm already subscribed to her channel and I'm excited to see all the things that she makes. She is definitely more on this color spectrum than my uh, rustic earthy neutral tones. Uh, so it's a bright pop of color and just what I am feeling like right now. Mm. So pretty! Uh, I forgot that I have another work in progress to show you. If you saw episode 21 at the end, uh, I did a translation um, orally on a free pattern for slippers and I cast on another pair of these slippers. This is supposed to be um, a slipper pair for my mother. I have already made one for me and one for my father and I plan to make one for every fam family member. And I am using a yarn that I had in my stash, um, some imperfect skeins from uh, Sanes Garn called Tuve. Uh, it's 100% wool yarn, uh, which is great for felting. And these slippers are supposed to be felted when they're done. I know this looks weird, but you're supposed to make two of the feet and then put it into the other to make it double. That makes it really... Um, thick and snuggly and warm for the winter. So I'm holding the yarn double to make these. I hope and think that I do have enough of this to make three pairs. So one for my mother and for my two brothers, but we shall see. It's really not easy trying to record outside, even though it's in the morning. So I have some more acquisitions to show you guys. And the next one is a swap that I did with another podcaster friend in Transylvania. Uh, she has the podcast called Berke, uh, Berke Creations, Berke Nitz. Um, her name is Jofi, Jofi, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Um, it kind of looks like Sophie, but slightly different. Um, she is working on her homestead in Transylvania. And she has a knitting podcast and she wanted to uh, trade some yarns. So we decided to swap a sweater quantity of yarn so she could try some Norwegian yarns and I could try some of her local yarn from Transylvania, which is super exciting because I have never tried any yarn from there. And um, the Berke, which is the name of her podcast, is also the name of the local sheep breed. And she has some local mills that do spin up some of that yarn. Uh, the yarn is quite rustic. Um, it has a little bit of plant fibers still in the wool. And she uh, has hand dyed some of it for me. So the sweater quantity that she sent me were these five skeins right here. And as you see, they're not all the same color. Uh, this one right here is undyed. This is the natural gray uh, color, I believe, of the Berke sheep. This is... It has a dry feeling to it. It doesn't feel super prickly, but if you have sensitive skin, then yes, probably it will scratch a little bit. But I feel like um, it's it's really... It's almost similar to the merino tweed yarn uh, here in, in how it feels. It doesn't have a long straight fibers that sticks out, more curled, uh, has more crimp to it. Um, this is softer, but this also feels really nice. Um, it's a little bit uneven spun, but I would say this is probably a fingering sport. Uh, weight yarn. Uh, I'm excited to see how it knits up. I'll probably wait with casting on until it's a bit colder outside because this would make a lovely fall winter knit. The other four colors, this one is more green than the others. And she says that this is gray dyed with red onion skins and iron oxide is the more mortant which you use to bind the color um, on the yarn and it's a really lovely mossy gray 
So this could make a really nice gradient um, for a sweater or a shawl even. It's going to be really nice. These three are the most similar in color. It's a grade dyed with sumac, I think is what this says. You can correct me back if I'm wrong, uh, Jofi. Um, this is actually white. This one here is white dyed with sumac and iron oxide. And this is gray dyed with sumac and iron oxide. So these two are the same base. This is a white base, but it looks quite similar um, when you hold them up next to each other. So I have two of these gray with sumac. I have white and then I have onion skins, the green and the natural gray here. And it, they are really pretty yarns and I'm really looking forward to trying it. There is something extra special about local yarns where you know where the sheep ha come from, where it's spun, where it's dyed. It gives it a little bit of extra meaning, uh, if you know what I mean, compared to if you buy something commercial in a store and you have no idea where it comes from. It's beautiful. It might be feel great and be great to knit with, but this has a little bit of a backstory to it, which is really nice um, when things have a backstory. It makes it fascinating. And in addition to the sweater quantity that we traded, we decided to send like a little bit of surprise in the package, like some surprise yarn. So she sent me this beautiful red orangey coral color. This is the Rosarios for Duoro which is 100% organic yarn. Um, it says an eco-friendly collection. It's 100% organic wool and 280 meters. So this could be great um, to add in some, for some color work or maybe as part of a shawl that uses many colors. We shall see, it's really pretty. I would say this is a coral with a little bit of orange tint to it. So, yes. So that was one. And she also sent me these 200 gram balls of Eva Eba color, which is 100% wool as well. And this is from Bulgaria, actually. So this is a nice natural white and it's it feels really nice and soft it's a bit thicker so this will be great to to use for um some of the patterns that i have that calls for a bit thicker yarn because i do have a lot of uh, fingering white in my stash and it's always nice to have a bit of white to use uh, when i need some contrast or this would also make a nice cowl so maybe that's something i could make with it we shall see but yeah, I'm really happy with the swap. I now can say that I have two um, lovely people in the world that I have swapped yarns with. I have my yarn swap buddy, Suzanne from Canada, and I've also now swapped with uh, Jofi from Transylvania. If you would like to try yarn for somewhere completely different and have a yarn swap friend, we do have the thread on Ravelry where um, several of you have posted a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what yarn you would like to try, and what you could offer. And uh, then people there DM those people that they're interested in. And um, I know that a lot of people have made some lovely connections and gotten some lovely yarn to trade from each other. And then, you know, if people are satisfied with their trade buddies, they can remove their comment from the thread so they don't keep getting DMs. So if that's for you, you should check that out. All right, so I have also gotten from her because she started making stitch markers. So this was one of the first stitch markers that she made. 
she has started to make these lovely um, homemade stitch markers with plant, plant leaves and flowers uh, from around her homestead and from nature and she has gotten really good at it. Some of them are so pretty. This was one of the first ones she made and it has a little leaf inside it. And she also sent me this very cute little llama. Let's see, it blows out. Which is going on one of my knitting bags. Who doesn't love a little llama? So cute. So yeah, check out her podcast if you want to see another knitter talking about all the knitting related things. And yes. Also, check out the thread if you want to get a swap buddy. One last acquisition that I have gotten is my Knit Crate. Um, I am an affiliate member of Knit Crate, which means they send me uh, their monthly subscription for their yarn club, and then I do an honest review on it. And if any of you would like to try it, then you could use the coupon Knitting Traditions, which will get you 20% off. And if you use um, the link that I have, which I've put in the description box below, um, then if you ever end up buying something, then I would get a little bit of um, money from knitting Knit Crate. Um, but you don't have to do anything. I am just honestly a fan. Uh, this is the March Club that just arrived. They have had some problem with shipping and also I was at the cabin so for the last month but uh, the March Club has finally gotten here and you guys this is so soft it's like butter honestly it's so soft um, this is the March Knit Crate the, and for the March Knit Crate um, they had the patterns for this yarn online because every month with the yarn you get a knitting pattern and a crochet pattern that will match um, the yarn and you always get two skeins but you don't know what color you get so that's kind of exciting if you're into that and the March yarn was Vidalana Celestial uh, they have their own yarn and the color is Ganymede and it's 90% alpaca and 10% tensile and this is an iron weight, so it's uh, 137 meters per 100 grams. And this is made in Peru for Knit Crate. And this is a lovely grayish blue. Uh, I don't have a lot of blues in my stash, but this really is a pretty one. And it feels so soft. <laughs> I think that's because the alpaca does feel really soft on the hands and also the tensile um, makes it feel quite soft. I do find that alpaca on my skin is more scratchy than wool. Everyone is different, but this feels really nice and soft. Um, maybe if I had really tight turtleneck with this, it would scratch my neck a bit. Not because it feels scratchy, but just because my skin reacts to alpaca a little bit if it's very tight on. So I'm not sure what I will make with this yet. Uh, I might save it for the fall before I start knitting it up just because it is a thicker uh, iron weight and I will have a look in my uh, 52 weeks of shawls book to see if there is um, one of the patterns uses iron weight and more than one color. Uh, I did knit up with the February crate, I knit a t-shirt um, with the two skeins, but that had a little bit more meterage, so I don't think this, or I mean, maybe I could squeeze a ranunculus out of this, but I think I want to have this for a different project. And uh, so that was the March, and they also sent a sticker, because they always include a little bit of something extra. And it is a sticker um, you can put on your car that says, Honk if I dropped a yarn ball. <laughs> That's funny. And um, they now ship in these um, 
eco-friendly packages, which is 100% biodegradable, which is really nice because I do like to recycle. And every time um, they ship out a package, if you subscribe, they plant a tree to kind of, um, uh, what's it called? You know, because when you ship something, there is a CO2 output from shipping and they kind of try and match that by planting a tree. Um, so it's, it's really nice. And so far, uh, the two um, months that I have received have been non-superwash, which is also uh, kind to nature and nice. So I hope they continue with that. And um, they always do kind of show you what the, the upcoming month's yarns will be. And, you know, you can't choose the colorway, but if you don't uh, like the look of that month's um, yarn, they also have a sock club, so you could switch um, your membership from the knitting crochet one to the sock club uh, one. So maybe I'll try that for one of the future months if uh, I see that the yarn's not me. We shall see. So yes, I think that was all of the knitting. Uh, we did hit 20,000 subscribers, which I honestly did not think would happen. Uh, all the prizes that I have right now um, will go into the stash along prizes, but Along Avak Anna has generously donated five of her patterns to the podcast. So I was thinking, what's better than having five winners get a pattern of their choice? So Along Avak Anna is a designer. Uh, she has patterns both in English and French, and she uses a lot of fingering weight, which I quite enjoy because it's not always easy to find a pattern that has only fingering weight without anything extra that has like a nice elegant look and I think that really is her. She has a lot of elegant patterns. I've already knitted the Trascao which is one of her free patterns and it's beautiful. And I'm going to knit the Rospico probably this summer I think because I think it will look great on like kind of a t-shirt to have on uh, outside dresses and skirts and so yeah, the Rospico is definitely going to be a pattern that I will knit up. Uh, she has tons of beautiful patterns. So I was thinking um, if you would like to win one of her patterns, we can do a little giveaway this episode. So if you like this video, you subscribe and you leave a comment below uh, saying something along the lines of uh, that you would like to... Uh, win a pattern or you know just leave a comment and then i will draw five winners um in the next two weeks so uh what date is it oh okay let's say until the first of july so until then i will wait and then i'll draw five people and contact them so they can pick a pattern of their choosing from along avak anna and Yes, I don't imagine I will ever hit a bigger milestone. I think 20,000, that must be all the knitters in the world. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, there will definitely be more giveaways in the future because, you know, we are doing the stash long and there really is not much criteria. Just make something. And I'm assuming, you know, if you're watching this channel, you are a creative person in some sort of way. <laughs> So you do have a chance of winning several prizes still this year. And then maybe what do you guys think about running a rustic knit along again? Maybe from the fall and maybe that can run for a long time because I did really enjoy seeing people knitting with uh, more earthy wools uh, and more unprocessed yarns. That was really fun. So maybe we can do that again if you think that would be nice. Other than that, I think that was all of the knitting related stuff. So maybe we can just sit and knit for a bit together. I hope that you are having a lovely week or weekend, depending on when you watch this video. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I feel like the winter in the northern hemisphere has lasted a really long time. I'm still waiting for it to be 
sunny and warm. Like I'm sitting outside now, but I'm wearing a wool blanket on my lap because it really isn't that warm. I've been working a lot though this past week and I will be working a lot, so it's it's not a big deal. But it would be nice uh, to be outside in the garden when I got home from work. Um, to just listen to the birds, maybe lie in the hammock with a nice cup of coffee and just enjoy the day. But I think us knitters are lucky because we can be inside as well and do what we love and have a cozy time no matter what the weather is. I guess if it is really warm outside, that might not be the best weather to knit with. But that's why I really wanted to try out this summery yarn. Because linen and silk have quite a cool touch to the hands. Um, sometimes knitting with linen and cotton and silk can be quite rough on the hands. But because it, it doesn't have that springiness that uh, wool has. It's quite a tight fiber. You can't really stretch it. Um, but I must say, this feels quite soft and nice on the hands. I'm not having any problems knitting with it. It's, it's, it feels really nice. And it's a great yarn to knit with if it is really warm outside. So, you know, Mother Earth, I'm, I'm ready. I'm prepared. Just send the summer temperatures and the sun. I am ready for it. And if not, the, all of my other knits are wool, so... I'm prepared for whatever weather, and even though it is quite cold and my fingers are not the warmest <laughs> right now, I'm still knitting on this because it makes me happy and it's quite mindless right now, at least, knitting in the round. So yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Later today, I think I'm going to go to a cafe because I feel quite rested. And then I have another shift tomorrow. And that's pretty much how my summer will be for the rest. What are you guys knitting on? Do you have a summer knit on the needles? Or is it winter where you are? Let me know what you're knitting on. I'm always looking for inspiration. So yeah, I don't really have a lot of life updates to talk about. I am desperately trying to grow some plants outside my door. Um, my apartment is facing the shadow side. So the sun goes up that side and then it goes around and I just see it as it goes down in the afternoon. That's the time it comes around the corner. So my plants really don't get a lot of sun. But, um, they seem to be doing fine. <laughs> they are blooming. And they definitely are not drying out because there is a lot of shade and rain. And I think the plants that I planted at the cabin are surviving. Uh, when I look at the weather report, it's been raining and they do have drainage, so they shouldn't be drowning. So that's nice. I hope one day that I can have a big garden with um, with a lot of flowers and vegetables and all that. Uh, I do realize that I need to have probably like 10 more hours a day to get everything done that I would like to because as of right now my life is work, sleep, a little bit of food, and the rest is knitting. Which, you know, I don't mind. I really do enjoy knitting. It's it's my way of relaxing. Um, what is knitting to you? Because to me, knitting makes me relax. It makes me happy. I get to have a creative, creative outlet and it lets me recharge. If I feel tired and drained, having some hours to myself just knitting, that brings me comfort and um, makes me ready for the world whatever it has to bring it recharges me which i guess i do a lot of knitting so i must need a lot of recharging <laughs> oh. i am so impressed by the people who also have children and work and get a lot of knitting done because to me you know 
I fill all my time with those two things. So if if I had something else in my life, then something would have to go, or at least be decreased. But then again, I see you know, Penrose knits another lovely podcast. She gets a lot of knitting done, and she also has kids, so it must be possible. I hope all of you out there get all the knitting time that you would like to get or at least that the knitting time you do get is precious to you and that you enjoy it all right so i think that was all for today i will probably cast on something more before next time because casting on all the things is giving me all the joy and i do think that um the skull maca sweater is going to be done soon and for the shawl i have no rush because i don't need to wear it until the fall anyways because you know hoping for that good weather <laughs> all right so uh stay safe stay well keep knitting and i will see you next time bye